Hey everyone, I'm here with Nat Kringudis. She's a doctor of Chinese medicine, an acupuncturist, and a natural fertility educator. She is calling in all the way from Melbourne, Australia, where she owns a business called The Pagoda Tree. So Nat, welcome. I'm so happy you're here to chat with me today and that we figured out our time zone differences. I know. Thank you so much. It's such a delight to be able to do this with you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. So I wanted to start first by, well, I introduced you, but by asking you, you know, what it is you do and how you came about to be doing all of this. Sure. Well, I'm a natural fertility specialist or expert, as I like to call myself, but basically I, I was one of those people that was overweight and had terrible periods and was really unwell. And at the time I was studying Chinese medicine and kind of just going through the motions of that and possibly didn't connect to you know, that together, that I was going to be a health practitioner and I needed to be healthy. Oh, yeah. And so I, I opened my business, I know, right? I opened my business and um, I got healthy and I lost weight and I did all the right things and um, I opened my business and I actually had one day where I said, I will never treat women's health. It is just too hard and I don't like it and I don't want to do it. And within maybe five weeks, I was inundated with women's health issues, fertility issues, and I was like, all right, do you know what? If this is what I'm supposed to do, this is what I'm supposed to do. So wow. rather than know a little bit about everything, as you do as a new practitioner, you kind of just take whatever you can get. I kind of went, all right, well, I've got to just, I've got to man up. I've got to go and know as much as I can about fertility and that be my thing. And so that's what I did. And that was um, almost ten years ago now, so it's yeah. been um, it's been an amazing journey, and it, it certainly is. Um, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. It's so fulfilling and rewarding. That's amazing. I can't believe it's been ten years, and I love that you said I got a man up. It's more like I got no, a no, woman no, up. No, <laughs> no, no, not woman up, man up. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, I know. One of those things, anyway. <laughs> no, I thought it was great. Uh, yeah, no, that's really, really interesting. You know, I get a lot of questions about acupuncture from women, and, you know, I've been doing it for many years, too. It was actually, for me, the catalyst for my whole health journey. I started with acupuncture, and that just opened a million doors. So, uh, so like I said, I get a lot of questions about it, and so maybe you can tell us uh, how acupuncture helps with fertility or imbalanced hormones, anything like that. Sure. Well, I mean, there's a few theories about how acupuncture works. And, you know, from a Chinese medicine perspective, the way that we see the body works is different from a Western perspective. Um, however, you can very often draw the correlation. So it's pretty cool in that sense. We're talking about something that's been used for over 3,000 years. But basically yeah. the way it sees it is that each organ has a meridian that either goes to the, the arm or the leg and certain locations on that meridian will, will activate or deactivate certain things to happen in the body. So the liver meridian is a good example because it runs through the reproductive organs, through the genitals and down the foot. And there's certain things um, or certain locations on that meridian where you can kind of um, relax the state of the liver or you can actually make it, you know, come to the party a little bit more. You can, if you need to, <laughs> if certain... Um, symptoms are, are leading towards maybe that the liver is, you know, there's too much heat and all sorts of things. And you can, you know, introduce some more cooling sort of points that help to cool the body down. There's so many things you can do. Yeah. That's the way that we see it to work. But from a Western perspective, what we know is that acupuncture helps to, A, um, intercept the, the pathway or the message to the brain saying, hey, that, that hurts, you know, so mm -hmm. I've got a muscle spasm that hurts, let's use some acupuncture to help to relax the muscle. And when we relax the muscle, we can deliver more blood and nutrients so it heals. But also at the same time, for something like your reproductive health, if, it, if at the end of the day the only thing it's doing is increasing blood flow to your reproductive organs, that is really beneficial. So yes. there's, you know, there's lots of theories about how it works. And I guess I go for a bit of a combination of all of those things because we're living in a time now where we're researching things to understand how they work, which is so cool. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. I know I get so many women coming to me who say, well, I've already done all of this research. And so it is amazing. There's so much information out there. And I think practitioners like you, you, you put so much on your website and you put so much out there and people have so much access to, to pretty much everything, to all of this information now. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's really, you know, it's no different to you. What I'm trying to do is I just want people to have 
information so they can make informed decisions. I'm not here yeah. to change their mind. I'm not here to say what you're doing is wrong, if you need to do this. I'm here to say, hey, there's another way. Have you looked at that? Maybe that might work for you. Maybe a combination of things might work for you. But there's never just one way to do something. That's the point. I know. It's so true. It's like there's mm. – I know. I agree completely. This one-size-fits-all thing just isn't working yeah. anymore. So – so what, what's like the most, I mean, I know that you focus mostly on fertility, but is that, so like what is the biggest issue that you see for women? Like what is causing the fertility problems for them? Sure. Well, the one thing I want to say is that I, my, I recently just t changed my tagline, so to speak, because I realized yeah. that when I was saying fertility, people were automatically thinking about babies and it's so not about babies. Totally. It's about having a healthy reproductive system that's ready to go so I use that analogy of soil if you've got beautiful fertile soil that you look after that you water and you nourish and you you go out and you feed it and you do all the right things and then when the time comes along that you plant a seed it grows into this amazing tree yes or you've got this barrel barren soil over here that you don't do anything with and you plant a seed and it kind of blows away because <laughs> it sits on the top of the soil and doesn't do anything you know yes. you can see that that's the same as our bodies right totally so, so yeah, great. so when I talk about fertility and the main issues, it's probably no different to what you see in the sense that, you know, anything that stands in the way of your reproductive organs being the best version of themselves is going to lead to fertility troubles. So endometriosis, polycystic ovaries, thyroid issues, being overweight, all of, you know, just being generally unhealthy. Um, and the biggest, biggest thing is women coming off some type of hormone contraceptive that have been left shattered because their body is just broken at the other end of that. So, yeah, yeah, you know what? It's the same message that you're, you know, that your women are listening to and wanting to hear and finances in as well. Yes, absolutely. I could not agree with you more. I, you know, when we talk about the pill, I feel like that is one of the biggest, it's almost like an epidemic because yeah. so many women are going on it so young, long before their bodies have time to even process what's happening. And then 20 years later, they're off of it, but uh, their bodies just don't know what to do. I mean, they don't know how to even make hormones properly. Exactly. So, yeah. So that, that, I, think, I, I think the thing is that, that we're being prescribed something when it comes to the pill. We're being prescribed something that we're told is safe, and that's because that's what our healthcare practitioner has been led to believe. Yes. And it's only, you know, now, 30 years later, that we're going, you know what? There's actually ramifications of this, yep. and we're seeing these massive fertility problems that I can't help but I know it's diet and I know it's lifestyle, but the other big factor is contraceptive methods. For sure. So, mm -hmm. do you find so do you you use a combination then of acupuncture and herbal remedies as well as diet? So, so it's everything. Yes. So I, I really look at the whole the whole thing, and it, you can't separate it. You know, if someone comes in and has acupuncture and Chinese medicine but they go out and they eat wrong and they don't sleep and they're highly stressed and it's not going to work you know okay. so it's, it has to be this combination it has to be this recognition too that there's there needs to be some respect for our bodies you know like I, I, I'm not saying that you can't enjoy your life or have fun and you know it, it's mm -hmm. it's actually just coming back and and decoding a decoding what our body is telling us because it's speaking to us every day yes um and, 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 you know, that's your and my job to help people decode that. But B, I can only give advice. People need to go into their lives and overhaul and do what they need to do so that they can put their best foot forward because you and I can't go in there and, you know, necessarily tell them when to sleep, you yeah. know, to be there. It's time now. Go, you know. We can't do that. Someone, okay. People have to be accountable too and it's it's we've gotten a little bit lazy. We have because, you know, it's not uncommon to be at the office until 7 o'clock. It's not uncommon to, to go home and then work again. You know, people do know. this and it's just not serving us. Oh, not at all. I heard something mm -hmm. the other day about uh, on a webinar by another women's health practitioner and she was talking about the fight or flight response and the fact that mm -hmm. we have that we have we go into that fight or flight response around fifty times a day now. Uh, that's what the latest amazing. studies are showing, and that's insane and that's, to me. It's not designed. I know. It's not designed that. <laughs> exactly, I know. And of course, when we're in that state, no, nobody's trying to have a baby. <laughs> nobody's body is trying uh -oh. to have a baby. 
Yeah. Well, no, it's just, it's impossible. It is impossible. And this is the thing, you know, if we're in that state and we're in this constant state where there's so much cortisol being released into our body, mm-hmm. um, you know, we've got to make that connection. We just have to realise that that's going to make our hormones imbalanced. And okay. there's certain, certain things you can do that aren't hard. It doesn't involve you, you know, standing on your head for three hours a day. And, you know, it doesn't involve crazy things. It's yeah. very logical stuff. <laughs> exactly. I think that that's the problem. People think that it's going to require so much uh, profound change and it's going to be very difficult. And that's what I keep saying. It really isn't that difficult. And once you start to work smarter and not so harder, then yeah. it's things, exactly. things work Exactly. And that even comes down to things like IVF. I do a lot of IVF support. Yeah. And, you know, there are some instances where IVF is absolutely necessary. There is no other way. Right. But there's also a lot of instances where it's not necessary at all and just nobody's looked hard enough to give someone an answer as to why they're not falling pregnant. Absolutely. I say that time and time again. So do you, so this is, and do you find that that's happening with younger and younger women where they're coming to you, but they've already, you know, they're already in the IVF process when you feel like they shouldn't be? Absolutely. And I look, I'll never change someone's mind. If that's what they're doing, then that's what they're doing. But I will give them the information that they need to understand that you know, if you're in this state right now mm-hmm. and that's what you're putting forward to try and reproduce and you can't reproduce naturally and there's no known cause, you know, there's no blocked fallopian tubes or, you know, whatever it might be, then we need to look at what's going on before IVF will be successful. And mm-hmm. I kind of pride myself too on saying, well, when you get to the bottom of all of that and, and you do go through IVF, it's successful straight up because... All the boxes are ticked. Your body's got everything it needs. Absolutely. And, you know, that, that last part with that embryo transfer is, is successful. For sure. I mean, so you're mm-hmm. exactly. So that's the thing. That's what I keep saying is I feel like if they could just wait a couple more cycles, it's more than yeah. likely that they would just get pregnant naturally. Mm, absolutely. Yes. And, and I think, you know, as you'd understand, there's this whole emotional other side to things with IVF it's such a roller coaster it's so painful for a lot of women um it's almost like they 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 shut off part of their brain the the emotional part of their brain because it just is so painful right you know on a on a a, not a not necessarily well on a physical level as well as an emotional level absolutely I I like you see it time and again too it really is I mean, it literally takes everything. It can, it's all consuming, or at least it seems that way totally. from my perspective. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, yeah. thank you for all of that information. Thanks for sharing all of that. I, do, I love your insight because I agree that there, we do need to be looking deeper and uh, as a society, and we're not. So, uh, But that leads mm. me into uh, wanting to ask you about your latest uh, goings-on, which I believe is a book that you have oh. coming out. Yeah, so we put out a book at the um, end of last year called Eat Fat, Be Thin. Yes. And we've had an amazing response. It's It's gone into its third print run, basically just teaching people why they need to put fat back into their diet and why fat's not making us fat. And, totally. you know, if low fat worked, we'd all be thin and we're not. <laughs> and so, you know, working out from, especially from my perspective, from a hormone perspective, you, your, your reproductive hormones are made of fats and protein. You need to eat fat. I know. So it, yeah, I know. Funny that. It's <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so really coming back and teaching people about that, I'm excited because we put our next book out um, that hits shelves in Australia week after next. So um, I can't quite reveal the title yet, but oh, that's really exciting. Okay. <laughs> and, um, you'll, have to keep, you'll have to keep a watch out for that. But, um, yeah, so that, that's, it's basically along the same lines, but um, our first book was – very heavy with sweet recipes because we found that people, um, you, you told them um, or advised them and guided them to eat and remove sugar, but they didn't know what to do. I know. And so um, there's some alternatives in there that help people to be able to still in, have their cake and eat it too, we say. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. that, but the, the new book is more savoury recipes. So and it's got um, quite a big selection uh, of material on um, hunter-gatherer type of um, principles rather than, you know, modern eating. So it is. It's really cool. And I'm so excited that, you know, to be able to put out two books in, in you know, as Short little time. as six months has been such a, such a joy and a whirlwind at the same time. <laughs> I know. I can imagine you're a very busy lady. So tell me one last thing. What is 
you know, what would be your goal for the book and then your goal ultimately for the future of women's health? I've recently been able to um, share with women in different ways. So I've been lucky enough to um, produce and host or co-host a web series called Health Talks. I don't know if you've seen that, but yes. it's something I'm heavily involved in and it's really ignited this this desire for me to share as much information as possible. So moving forward, I've been lucky that I've been able to start to do a lot more speaking arrangements and presenting all this information to people that wouldn't otherwise have it. So that's really a goal of mine to keep on doing that and, and get Health Talks um to a wider audience because whilst the great the beauty of something that's on the internet is that anyone can see it I know um, but to just share that message because the information that we share on that is right across the board and appropriate to everybody it's not just about um, reproductive functions so that's you know my main thing I mean the goal for um, my book and everything else moving forward I've got another book that I wrote last year called Fertilize Yourself yes. and um, I really have a lot of vision around that as well. I'd like to see that go to print. It's an e-book at the moment and um, that is really the, the – that's the core of what I live and breathe. So to get that yes. to print and get that, you know, as spread as wide and far as possible is really on my list of things to do as well and, of course, just to keep on helping patients in the clinic. You know, I'm lucky now. I've got a, a team so it's not just reliant on me being there. There's – there's, you know, other people that can, can help people in the same ways I do with hands-on approach as well as, you know, I do Skype consults and things like that as well. So it's, you know, just oh, wow. keeping on doing more yeah. of what I'm doing like you're doing and spreading that message. Absolutely. Woman with a mission. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, well, I've got, I must say I've got a lot of helpers. I don't necessarily do it all on my own. I've got That's two okay. small children, so you've got to kind of prioritize. But, yeah, I've got a lot of helpers, which is great. Absolutely. I know. How old are your kids again? Uh, my, my daughter's five and my son's 18 months. 18 months, right. Wow. Okay, yes. So I can't imagine that kind of universe of busy. <laughs> it's, it's definitely yeah, crazy. Yeah, you know, it's a different level again, but it's, you know, it's, I wouldn't change it. Wouldn't have it any other way. It's, um, it's, it's amazing. Absolutely. It is. Life is amazing. So I yeah. am so happy that we got to chat today. I want to wrap this up and I know it's, we have to sort of make it short and sweet so everybody can tune into the whole thing. <laughs> but um, anyways, I want to thank you so much for being with me and also for sharing all of your wisdom and just tell everybody where they can find you, what your website is, all that kind of stuff. Sure. Sure. Um, it's just natkringudis.com.au. So um, Kringudis is a bit tricky. I'll spell it. It's K-R-I-N-G-O-U-D-I-S. Okay. And the same on all your others, Twitter and Facebook, they're all Nat Kringudas. Okay, awesome. Well, I'll also post that in our uh, in the section where we post the interview, so it's all good. So everybody will Excellent. have that info. So thanks, lady. It was awesome to chat with no, you. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks. Bye.